Miller. Breaking into school buildings is serious business. I think Dean Eisner would like to hear of this. <coughs> <coughs> and welcome to hello this is the doom show i am richard folks before i introduce my co-hosts right now um put up a content warning this is one of those movies that's painful emotionally it's painful the splatter the gore is is really unpleasant um the sexual stuff really really uncomfortable to even think about much Mm. less talk about um and also, it's just gut wrenching. Talking about Airy Astor's Zombie High. <laughs> Simon, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello, folks. Zombie High from 1987 is uh, compared to how new horror movies are. It's it's quaint as mm. shit. This is like oh. a quaintest quaint that ever quainted a quaint. Yeah, it's the taint of quaint. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, this is from director Ron Link, who did nothing. Uh, this was this was his gateway into the the world of directing, and then he said, "No." I just had a David Lynch moment. We're going to talk about David Lynch by proxy. I mean, when do we not? Course, you know? When you've, you've got me on the show, of course. But uh, <laughs> the word Link reminds me of sausage. I think that's a Gordon. Oh. Well, he says linkage. It's a Gordon Cole line. I think from Twin Peaks. Oh, nice. See, I need to watch more shit. I'm, <laughs> I need to get back to it. Um, although uh, apparently Ron Link was uh, one of Andy Warhol's pals mm. back in the '60s. He, unless it's a different Ron Link, uh, IMDb credits him as being in Batman Dracula from oh, 1964, wow. yeah. which is very interesting. Uh, but this was written by uh, Tim Doyle, who would go on to write a bunch of TV stuff. He was a very prolific uh, comedy TV writer. It's also written by Aziz Gahal, excuse me, Aziz Ghazal, who uh, is apparently an infamous character mm, in his own yeah. mind. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about him. And then uh, someone named Elizabeth Passarelli, who I think was kind of like his cohort. Yeah. Uh, she didn't really do much more. But um, here is the here's the lovely trailer for this movie, which will tell you, you know, the whole plot. <laughs> So spoiler warning, we're going to spoil this whole movie. The plot's stupid, don't worry about it. But just in case, spoiler warning, here's the trailer. It's Zombie High with Drop Dead Guys. You said you hated this place. Well, I've changed my mind. Brainless girl. You think you could heat it up a little bit? You had a nasty little accident. You could have been killed. And teachers who make an everlasting impression. You live forever and the students get lobotomized? He's a total droid, brain dead. We've got the opportunity here to have some serious fun. Prepare to scream. Did you hear something? Zombie High, where the teachers and the students never die. Man, I, I love just the whole movie laid out for you <laughs> in like a, a minute and 15 seconds or however long that trailer is. Oh, it's brilliant. And it just it kind of sums up, you know, um, in that very condensed form, just how, and I say this with the greatest affection, just how kind of <laughs> slightly confused this film is. Yes. 
Yes, very confused. Uh, speaking of confusing, um, I have a copy of a virtual copy of the VHS tape. Mm. This is the Cinema Group home video, which um, that's a new one on me. I would love to know what else Cinema Group home video put out. Oh man, I wonder if their logo. I wonder if they have a sexy logo. I have to look that up. Cinema Group home video. Um. Not really recognize. Oh my god, never mind. These motherfuckers put out The Slayer. Oh wow. Woo! Beautiful. Uh, they put out a home invasion movie called Possession mm-hmm. that I've been curious about. They put out they put out some things. But anyway, got distracted there. Um, here's the wonderful VHS tape from them. Here's the plot synopsis. Virginia Madsen of Slam Dance, Electric Dreams, Fire with Fire, and Richard Cox of The Bronx Zoo and Cruisin star in this humorous thriller about the bizarre happenings that occur in a prestigious boarding school. It seems the upperclassmen act like robots. They're the perfect students, dedicated, involved, and loyal. Clothes are perfectly pressed and hair is meticulously combed. It seems that the teachers have something to do with their ingratiating behavior. But the question is what? Madsen plays Andrea Miller. She's the new kid in school and the object of one of the teacher's affections. When she sees her friends turning into clones, Andrea starts suspecting the worst. In a madcap and frightening series of events, she gets closer and closer to the secret behind the strangeness. Zombie High is a superior thriller with a hot soundtrack, kiss my butt, <laughs> action, action aplenty, and lots of laughs. LOL, 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 Why is this rated R? I have no idea why this was rated R. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, when the going gets preppy, the preppy turn into zombies. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my God. I got, um, um, on the front. <laughs> I don't, I don't I think this is from maybe a... Um... Because it says on the top left corner now available on video cassettes. I'm guessing this is the theatrical poster. Um, yeah. yeah, they were again really struggling for pull quotes apparently because there's two at the top from the New York Post that just says entertaining yeah. and my favorite, which is from Variety Below. <laughs> Don't you, did you see this? Virginia Madsen's fresh performance is accompanied by James Wilder's nice turn as her boyfriend. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, his nice turn. Oh, hey, how much is that poster on eBay? I'm curious. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, this is real typing here. Hope you're watching on your cams, your your sex cams. And your only fans. <laughs> your only cams? Oh, man, you can get a zombie high poster for cheap. Mm. Oh, boy. Nice. There's also the German poster that's awesome. Oh, my God. I'm going to check this out. Dude on a stick, I will chat you this. It's Ooh, so wow. pretty. You saw it? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That almost, speaking of David Lynch, it almost reminds me like of that mm. really creepy one for Blue Velvet. Oh, the Italian poster, I think. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, Italian. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Oh, man. Woo. Nice. So a little bit of these cast members here to set us up. Uh, we've got <sighs> Virginia Madsen. Mm. Holy shit, man. I, of course, have had a crush on her since I first saw her in Candyman back mm. in the day. <laughs> My mom bought me a ticket for Candyman to drop me off at the theater. Oh, wow. I was like 13, Mm. maybe? Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Oh, man, I'm jealous. Uh, She's our 26-year-old high school student. (laughs) So so this is not a zombie high school. This is a zombie prep school before college. Yeah. But zombie prep school, I think, is not a catchy title. (laughs) But these are supposed to be young people coming out of high school getting ready for college. And hot damn, um, I never noticed this. Like, I'll be watching a slasher with friends, and they'll be like, are these supposed to be high schoolers? But when they drop off, when when her boyfriend drops her off at school, I thought she was supposed to be a teacher. <laughs> I'm like, why is she rooming with the... Oh, she's, a, she's supposed to be like 18. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't normally comment on that kind of stuff. But anyway, she plays Andrea. She's She's one of the... Like, handful of girls. This school has never had girls in it before. This is the first wave of ladies. Her boyfriend, the the, the fresh-faced, uh, under the uh, the wonderful turn by him, or whatever they Ooh. said, uh, is James Wilder. He plays Barry. Uh, Barry brings the Beverly Hills 90210 angst 
to the movie. He's very much the most annoying fucking boyfriend ever. <laughs> but yeah, he did some TV movie stuff. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I'm just... The first thing that comes up that he's known for, wow, this title from uh, 2014. <laughs> three, <laughs> three holes and a smoking gun. Wow, wow, wow. Hang on a minute, you missed a bit. Unless it's coming up differently here. What do you got? You missed the most important bit. Three holes, two brads, and a smoking gun. What the fuck? No, it doesn't. No? What? I had to click on it to uh, see. The... Yes. Right, okay. So it's three holes, two brads, and a smoking gun. I wish it had colon, a love story after <laughs> it. Wow. I, can you imagine two brads? Oh, man. I can barely handle one. Mm. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, that's James Wild. Or mm. what else was he in? Oh God, <laughs> he was in "Can't Stop the Music" from 1980, the the Village People movie. Oh right, he was wow. a sword juggler. <laughs> he was a sword juggler. <laughs> Take that a euphemism. <laughs> It is now. <laughs> oh, boy. But he's in something the same year as this called Night Force. Mm-hmm. And it looks like an action movie, but the poster is awesome. It looks so good. Wow. Linda Blair and that. Richard Lynch. Wow. What the fuck? Let me guess. Richard Lynch uh, oh, is not shit. a good guy. Cameron Mitchell. Okay. Okay. I'll watch it. Yep. I mean, you had me at Richard Lynch, but <laughs> all the screenshots look amazing. Yeah. Holy crap. Holy crap. Yeah. It's coming soon to <laughs> Simon and I talking. We'll, we'll talk about some action. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so he's in it. He's fine. <laughs> the other side of this triangle, the other point of this triangle of love is Dr. Philo, mm. played by Richard Cox, who I love how he was in Cruisin', which I have not seen in years. I've never seen it. Oh, it's so good. Mm. It's like it's like fantastic freaking movie. It's scary and it's like sweaty and like... <laughs> It's wild. Right it's just, it is way ahead of its time, I think. Just way, way ahead of its time. I've just seen, um, yeah, no, to get on that, I've just seen he was in an episode of The X Files, and I wonder if I've seen it as it was somebody yeah, else which, who we will come to. It was in a much earlier episode, but this is from 2000, so it's possible I've not seen this one yet because I think that's where I'm up to now. Uh, uh, sounds about Series 8 era. Um, nice, nice. Oh, no. Um, Series 7, episode 18, Brand X, which was kind of a uh, anti-smoking or something to do with the t- tobacco industry, as I recall, which was kind of a thing. Okay. Way. Speaking of uh, X-Files, um, the dean of the school, mm. is, uh, school is K.E. Cooter. <laughs> I know that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, he plays Dean Eisner. Um, he was also in an episode of X-Files in a 1995 episode. Yeah, yeah. I kind of remember that one. The Calisari, I think, was... Uh, Right, good. Yeah, creepy one. But but this dude, 141 credits. So mm. he was mm. he was just in everything. Oh, he was in Warlock uh, with uh, Julian Sands. Ah, I wonder if that's with a thumbnail of him like falling into a yeah. or something. Where it's a, it's a very strange thumbnail that they pick for him, where he's just sure, looks sure. like he's just died and he's falling into some kind of abyss, dressed as a fucking wizard. Maybe it is what well, it's years. Oh, I've it's it says it's from a uh, Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine ah, episode. Ah, right, of course. There you go. But my mind, what a little. Sorry, go on. I was going to say, what a little cooter. (laughs) My mind was absolutely blown, though, when I saw a couple of his... He did some uh, voice acting credits for video games in the 90s, and I was quite a fan of... uh, And I've actually been replaying some of these, um, kind of for nostalgia, and they do hold up wonderfully. The LucasArts uh, point-and-click adventure games. Specifically, uh, he was in The Curse of Monkey Island. I've heard of that. Mm. I never played that. It oh, they're both, awesome. they're both wonderful, yeah. Next up, we've got um, some of uh, Andrea's pals here. The in- incomparable Sherilyn Fenn. She plays Susie, mm. our, our, our Twin Peaks alumnus <laughs> here. I almost ordered a movie with her, um, Meridian. Oh, speaking, we were talking about Charles Bowden before, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, apparently, they saw the, the scene in Bram Stoker's Dracula where... You know, mm. Dracula in Wolfman mode is having sex with uh, <laughs> with uh, Lucy, and they're like, "Well, we need to make a whole movie of that." So yep. they did. <laughs> Fantastic. We have Paul Feig. I think it's Paul Feig. I'm not sure. How to yeah, I think that's right. He plays Emerson. Um, Paul Feig is a big time 
uh, comedic actor turned director mm-hmm. and producer. He's the dude who directed Bridesmaids. Mm-hmm. So like, and like made his career. Like, I mean, I'm sure he was probably doing somewhat well before then, but that was like Bridesmaids was the biggest thing ever. Apparently There's something that was mentioned on the commentary uh, that was recommended. Uh, they did like kind of a thriller. I think I forget what it's called now. Ooh. Um, was this uh, him in an acting role? Ah, uh, no, it's something he directed. I think it's a simple favor from 2018. Uh, mm, okay. With uh, Anna Kendrick and Blake Lively. I think this was the one that was mentioned, but yeah, um, the people who did the commentary, um, Nathaniel Thompson of Mondo Digital, I think he recommended it. Nice. The movie that he um, was in after this, he has a very small part, <laughs> hmm. uh, Three O'Clock High, oh. which is a great 80s movie, highly recommended, uh, Three O'Clock High. Uh, but he plays a hall monitor, so he doesn't even <laughs> have a character. But he's the comic relief in this movie. He's yeah. very fun. Speaking of angst, got oh, Mr. Wow. Angst. Yeah, uh, yeah. Scott Coffey plays Mr. Fellner. <laughs> um, I believe his father calls him John at one point <laughs> as he gets dropped off at the school. Uh, but yes, he's our spiky-haired, angry dude. Uh, he looks sort of familiar. Yeah, I he's, don't know. He's one of um, you know David Lynch's kind of stock company, I suppose. Like because he's oh, uh, look at that okay. Yeah, he, probably the one he has most screen time in. He's in uh, Mulholland Drive, but he is also in. So I should know this off the top of my head. I'm just my brain is falling out today. Uh, oh, he's in Rabbits. But yeah, you wouldn't obviously see him. Right, <laughs> Lost Highway. Yeah. I'm trying to. Oh, maybe he's one of uh, Balthasar Getty's friends in that but I just didn't. Really sure. Sure. Oh, wow. He was in warrior of the lost world. That rings a bell. He was in she. Wow. He's been kicking around for a while. Yeah, doing yeah. stuff. That's hilarious. But what might explain some of this? Did you see under the casting, um, credits on this film, a certain name pop up? Mm-mm. Was it, uh, hmm? was it, what's her face? The, you tell me, I can't remember. It's uh, at first because I, I had a feeling about this. I thought it might have been uh, Joanna Ray, who was a you know one of the probably the most famous I think casting directors that's been out there. Yeah, uh, I think if memory serves. Uh, anyway, it's Eric DeRay, who I think is her son. Okay, if serves, okay. I'm gonna have to look, but yeah, he's one of the casting people on Zombie High, which might explain all these curious linkages. Again, speaking of sauce. Right, right. Uh, the other pal of Andrea is uh, Mary Beth. She's played by Claire Carey. She's the the Southern gal, <laughs> but she's a big time like on every TV show. Mm. She like just she just would do like a one and done. Uh, but she had a show in 2006 that she was on quite a few episodes of. Oh, she was in Waxwork as well. Oh shit! Really? Yeah, apparently. I can't remember. Nice. Hey, speaking, of, speaking of movies you and I need to talk about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, she was on a show called Jericho for like most of it, I think. It's a post-apocalyptic show. But yeah, I didn't even see that she was in Waxwork. That's awesome. I love that movie. Thank that you. movie has, I mean, it's supposed to be weird, but, you know, in the Waxwork itself, but even that's weirder than you expect. Yeah. And yeah. then the whole setup with the high schoolers. It's strange, mm-hmm. strange setup for a very interesting movie. So yeah, we're gonna jump into this plot. Unless you have somebody else in the cast you wanted to highlight. Uh, let me just have a quick look. Sure, sure. No, I think that's it. I think you covered it all. So the movie opens up uh, with the photograph credits. So this is California. <laughs> this is very much a, a a movie shot in California. What they're trying to convince us is a New England freaking. Uh, prep school here so they use uh some helicopter shots but only the freeze frames of which of some new england uh, places very fun uh so you get the nice fall vibe even though it's you know do they even have fall in california (laughs) you know john carpenter struggled to find those leaves for Mm -hmm. halloween um over this we get a vague conversation uh one thing about this movie is the sound mix is not the best Mm. So fire up them subtitles, folks, because this is uh, this is one of those ones where I really think it's the source material. Yeah, they just yeah. didn't mix the sound so hot. Uh, but this is supposed to be uh, Barry and Andrea kind of like not mean or angry bickering, but kind of bickering over her going to this prep school. Um, we get a nice campus tour where we get to see some fun jokes. 
like the couple reading the yeah, newspaper, yeah. having the meet cute, <laughs> and you know a bunch of uh, preppy people, and just it's just eighties as hell. All yeah, the music, yeah. all the uh, what do you call it, the needle drops in this are just so incredible. <laughs> um, no famous songs. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite Z grade, but like you like these are not top. These would never even like make the top one hundred and, yeah, and yeah. even near it. Top five thousand maybe. And then my car shows up back in the 90s. Uh, my, my parents took pity on me and got me a car because uh, I was complaining so much. They got me a 1976 uh, Ford Granada, mm. which is what Barry drives. I don't know if it's 76, but it's <laughs> pretty damn close. Wow. It looks just like my car. And it's smoking. It's a piece of shit. And he drives right up onto the lawn to drop her <laughs> off. Um, oh, my it's God. It's kind of like... T- um, I don't know, it made me think of like fucking Animal House or something. Just like other yep. sort of crash land there for some reason. Exactly. Um, right when she shows up and he's struggling to get in his car from, I don't know, catching on fire or whatever he's doing, um, she meets this dream boat, this total dream boat, Dr. Philo. This guy has no chill whatsoever. He just starts flirting with this girl right in front of her mm. boyfriend. Not great. We'll find out later why he likes to flirt. And then next thing you know, we, we're meeting our jokester, Emerson, running around goofing. No one's laughing at his jokes. His roommate is really boring. He calls him a, a, dro- uh, calls him a drone mm. later or a droid or something like that, a brainless droid. He makes a, a Ralph Lauren joke. He says he's personal friends with Ralph Lauren. And just to hammer that joke home, Paul Feig, they gave him a little horse laugh on the soundtrack. Ah, uh, yes. I'm personal friends with Ralph Lauren. I mean, we're like this. <laughs> In case you're wondering where this movie's going. <laughs> and this is before, because it gets a bit wacky, it's just before they start doing going through all the uh, Adobe Premiere um, board of wipes or whatever, or whatever they would have done. Oh, my God. Yeah. So the all of the, almost all the cuts in this movie, thank God it's not all of them, that'd be a little annoying. <laughs> but when they're cutting from a scene to a scene, they use this, like, weird whoop <laughs> sound effect, and then they go, like, do this really harsh cut, which reminded me, of it's not as extreme but it reminded me of the cuts in streets of fire oh right okay which have you seen streets of fire no i don't think i have oh shit i think uh you will fucking love it oh we've taught yeah again 1984 so obviously i have to and uh yeah probably this year i will do that it is uh it is one of the most unique combinations of genres it's awesome wow and it has these cuts that feel like they were done with like a claw hammer just like crazy so cool wait a minute sorry the, the, what the hell's going on here so looking at the release date this is when you google it it says release date first of january 1 ad uk huh <laughs> wow at that so you guys got a, a, a premiere an early yeah, premiere to say the least yeah <laughs> 1983 years early what the fuck Flipping it makes right. no sense at all <laughs> what is, that Google's doesn't make any plot. sense but no i need that it sounds amazing i need to check that out uh, next thing you know, we get we get our our, our bad boy introduced. Uh, Mr. Fellner gets thrown out of a limo <laughs> by his parents. Um, this is so good. Oh, his father. He's a senator's son, unhappy family. This is his last chance, blah, blah, blah. We get to go to a, a little um, introductory ceremony. Yeah. Given, a little speech given by the uh, the dean of the school. Uh, Simon, what, what happened in this, this freaking amazing scene? Well, he's given his, uh, I don't know what you call it, um, not like a commencement speech, that's completely wrong, that's like, I don't know what they do when you graduate or whatever, but he's, um, is it kind of, I'm thinking back to Friday the 13th Part 2, he does his, uh, what well, one of the jokes from there calls the uh, keep our shit together speech, I suppose, of, you know, you represent the traditions of yada yada yada, so on yep. and so forth, and welcome, welcoming the, uh, you know, the, the ladies there, who I believe they're the first... Um, lot to arrive there but the important part of this scene anyway is when he uh, has his dead poet society moment and uh <laughs> imparts the school motto carpe diem seize the day and then all those people behind him get up <laughs> and basically sing seize the day cue and it all the new people. Him. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he like, holds his hand up to his ear it's like fucking i can't can't <laughs> And uh, all the the newbies just basically just can't and just completely lose their shit because it's it's fucking hilarious. What I love about this is that Carpe Diem is the most generic bullshit ever. Like it is 
how many thousands of schools have that as their freaking motto? It's so dumb. Like the writers could have made it something cryptic, mm. but nah, nah, we didn't, we didn't put that much thought into it. I wish you'd said Carpe Diem, baby, but that's a bit early for uh, the result I'm looking now. That was <laughs> ten years later. Uh, Metallica song on one of the, um, is it one of the loads, as they're affectionately referred to? I think. Yeah, re- <laughs> reload. <laughs> one of the loads. <laughs> Oh, I always think of uh, Carpe Canem from uh, oh, from right. the critic, where he's running down the street. Carpe Canem, Carpe Canem, sees the dog, sees the dog, <laughs> and he picks up a dog and he looks at it and he goes, "That can't be right. That can't be right." He puts the dog down and keeps going. Oh, brilliant! It's awesome. Uh, around this time, Andrea meets her kooky roommates, uh, Susie and Mary Beth. It's very fun. Uh, they play a song that is crazy and insane. <laughs> Uh, it, it, the lyrics are just so dumb. It's so oh my Would god! This it's a toe tap and jam. I think today. Oh, I've probably close this. No, I haven't. Do we think it's the one that's probably called on here? Let's go crazy. Probably yes. Which, incidentally, not the one that everyone might be thinking of. It is not. Yes, it is not the Prince Jammer, which is like one of the greatest freaking songs mm. ever. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my god. But um, yeah, I just I wish we had like 10 movies of um, Virginia Madison and Cheryl and Fenner's roommates. I mean, this is what I was made aware of this movie, but I can see on my shelf somewhere a zombie movie book called The Book of the Dead, uh, where yeah, I yeah. think maybe in the there's like a review section at the back. And I was just reading like them as roommates. I thought, hold on. Wait, what? Where has this movie been all my life? And I was luckily able to find it on our uh, satellite TV service as a rental. So I, did, you know, instantly sort of bitted that. But um, yeah, oh, did you spy? There's a poster, uh, I think, seeing behind Cheryl and Fenn at one moment on the wall. Did you s- see this? I think it's maybe meant to be a film poster. No, what was it? Uh, it says, I slept with a zombie. <gasps> nice. Yeah, yeah. I did not catch that. That's awesome. Oh, Good on the art department there. Yeah. Yeah, all these songs are pretty much by the same guy, the same duo, yeah, yeah. Kent Richards and Tim Rocco. Mm. Um, but yeah, yes. And sure enough, it's called Let's Go Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. Susie and Andrea are so excited uh, to, to, to have met. But Susie's really excited to have access to all these boys and how there's so few girls on the campus. Very funny. Um, and while they're out walking at night, they spot a total dream boat in the window. Mm. And sure enough, it's, it's this... Uh, we don't know he's a professor yet, but it's a good old Dr. Philo. Um, and then we go to my favorite scene in the movie, mm. which is the <laughs> Emerson is goofing off with Andrea in line at the lunch. Oh, the, yes. The, yes. The lunch line. They, they're being given some very crappy looking food. <laughs> she doesn't want any potatoes. And the person dishing out the potatoes does not pay attention to her, gives her extra potatoes, like a disgusting amount of mashed potatoes. And... <laughs> Emerson mm-hmm. tells this person in line, in line, if you give me potatoes, I will murder your entire family. And then they get out of line, and then the right behind them is this preppy guy who goes, I'll have a double order of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Just meant you eat what's in that ship. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> That's just so stupid. It's nothing to do with anything. I just love it so much. Fantastic. <laughs> Fucking potatoes. <laughs> Did one of them, maybe Emerson, does he make some comment about close encounters? I can't remember. Or uh, was, maybe. where my brain was going. <laughs> sorry. No, it's okay. I'm, I'm thinking so, I'm of... I'm laughing um, so hard. I'm, I'm sweating. <laughs> and now oh, I'm thinking, just cause, probably because I'm subscribed to about a million Lord of the Rings meme groups. And now, yeah, whenever I hear the word potatoes, I can't... <laughs> I'll oh, think of Sean, Sean Astin say, potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Oh, my God. Oh, all right. So we get to see inside good old uh, Dr. Philo's, uh, his pad, mm. his his music video uh, pad oh, that he boy. lives in. Yeah. Um, what does he What does he say? Or what, what is he doing in there? So, yeah, he's got a side more than neon. And like you say, it's a very, like, um, yeah, music video. Look, as a lot of this film is, like, the lighting and stuff. Um, it's kind of throughout. But, um, yeah, he's got, so he's got, like, a big, I don't know, like a plinth or something. He's got a big crystal, which then yep. Neil Madison is sort of, you know, sort of waxing lyrical about. Uh, but, yeah, maybe the, his show, you know, aside from that, is uh, 
just from its sheer fucking size, I suppose, his main showpiece point of interest in there. He's got, do you call it a pin screen? Is that what they call them? I think, I think yes. No. Uh, he's got yes. like a, basically a human <clears throat> platform. Which he, um, as they uh, riff on in the trail, lovely trailer we've heard. He, uh, what does he do? Makes a lasting impression. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, earlier he has fo- a photograph, uh, an old timey photo. Oh, of, of... he's looking at an old timey photo of him and somebody who looks very like Andre because, well, you know, it is obviously Virginia <laughs> person. And this blew my mind when I noticed it because it calls forward, you know, like by like five years to Candyman. You know, it's kind yes. of, uh, it was always you, Helen, sort of moment. Yes. It's just oh, it's so great. Oh, man, I freaking Candyman. That was a moment. Mm. That was a moment. That was probably one of the movies responsible for my freaking love of horror. Holy yeah, shit. yeah, me, me too, man, definitely. So good. Uh, but he comes on too strong, and she's like, I got to go. Yeah. After this, Andrea has a little dream. And it's it's not exactly the central fantasy we thought it was going to be based on how hunky Dr. Philo is. What is this dream that she had? Yeah, so I think it's finally picking up the thread in my notes here. It was just it's right after that bit, I think. Um, yeah, it, creepy ass surgery scene where it's the, the country girl she's been like chloroformed and taken off. And there's this like um, kind of almost like satanic Latin whispering or something. Yeah. And while she's having the, um, you know, a bit of crystal, whatever, this jumping head a bit, you know, implanted into her neck. And maybe this is why, you know, because there's a bit of blood where the implant, this is just where it got the R rating, which still seems insane, really. Totally. And you cut to uh, Andrea waking up, making it seem like it was kind of her nightmare, or maybe she was having like yeah. a psychic flash. It's unclear what happened, but I, I like that because it's just so kind of bizarre. In the dark, they both kind of look alike. Yeah, yeah. True. So it's kind of like one of those things where I was like, wait, who who got kidnapped? What? Mm, mm. Blondes have more fun. <laughs> Good old Barry is being a total ass mm. about her being at the school. And of course, he's calling up and going, hey, I did some research on that place you're at. The school's weird. <laughs> Talking about Native Americans and also about sacrifices uh, and the people who set up the school, did some evil shit. He's very vague, mm. but he, he's just so pathetic. It's hilarious. <laughs> Um, so, of course, we see that uh, Mary Beth has changed, and she's acting like a real preppy asshole mm. now. Doesn't want to hang out with uh, Andrea and Susie. Very sad. And also, at, during all this, uh, Mr. Fellner, our bad boy, is really running into trouble. He has a scene where he argues with the Latin professor. It's really embarrassing oh, argument. Yeah. And sure enough, he he is just pretending to be stupid because when the, the mm. teacher says something to him in Latin, he's like, huh, you're sick. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I neglected to translate this, but I got like fla- flagell- flagellata or something like that, which yeah. sounds like, I don't know, I'm going to whip you or something maybe, I'm guessing. Well, Could do want. a little spanky. <laughs> yeah. He's going to leave the school. Mr. Fellner, he tries to leave, but then the, the preppies get him. He tries to take them all on with a champagne bottle that he stole, uh, but they get him and we hear his screams. And we cut to my favorite thing in horror movies, mm. a swimming pool at night. Where Virginia Madsen wearing, even in a slightly conservative bathing suit, is just so gorgeous. <laughs> Whew, I wish I'd seen this movie as a teenager. Mm. Um, her towel gets stolen. <laughs> then uh, Philo's there being creepy again, hitting on her. And she's like, I'm dropping your class. And he's like, why? Because of all this. <laughs> like, this is insane, asshole. Um, outside Barry just shows up and this is where I wrote down my, my Beverly Hills 90210 moment. He, he and, uh, he and Philo have some words and it's just so overwrought teenage Mm. melodrama. I love it. Huh. Looks like you're getting a lot of studying done here. Barry, what are you doing here? Who the hell is this guy to you, Andrea? You're not a student here, are you? No, I'm not. It's okay. He's a friend of mine. A friend? Is that what I am? A friend? think after this, so it's my next note anyway, we have kind of a Jallo-esque moment. It was like a POV shot of a black glove smushing Andrea's face impression that she's done on the pin screen. Yeah, yeah, it's really weird. I like mm-hmm. that. And there'll be, a, um, without getting ahead, there's a great use, again, of that uh, pin screen towards the end of the movie. Yep, yep. Frickin' the Dean and Philo were talking about some operations and about serum dosages and they're doing this really loud in the courtyard and freaking Andrea just happens to be there uh, because um, freaking uh, Emerson has gone missing. She goes down to the freaking infirmary 
where she finds Emerson's body. Bum, bum, bum. Pie in minutes, Mrs. Miss Pie in minutes, in just 10 minutes, you got it made. 10 minutes in the microwave or 20 minutes in an oven. Pie in minutes. And you've got a tender, flaky crust brimming with lots of luscious fruit. Mrs. Miss Pie in minutes. Isn't it nice to have pie this good, this fast? I love the scene under the infirmary. It's just like the horror stuff is finally here. Mm. You know, <laughs> like, it's been kind of my, this whole movie is a very mild horror movie uh, to begin with. Yeah, there's some nice kind of like creepy moments which seem to work well amongst all the you know the the hijinks and all that, and some nice little like you know the the bit with the photo before and it all sort of double, double down on this later. And it, Richard Cox really plays it well. This kind of melancholic sort of longing or what have you it yeah. really kind of works quite well yeah good call underneath the infirmary is uh, the dungeon from the subspecies movie <laughs> and then sure enough mr fellner has returned he's no longer the bad boy he's a preppy good boy mm. um and of course uh we we found out that um emerson the comedic character he died because they didn't have proper records on him so when they went to go put in uh, you know, his little doodad to make him a zombie. Uh, he was in hemophiliac and he bled out. Um, they're just reporting what a sad accident it was. Yeah. And Lietta's like, yeah, the surgery team on campus really messed that one up, huh? Like, what? Just a bit. <laughs> like, <laughs> how in the fuck? What? Somebody says, you best not shine me, girl. And I wrote that down with no context whatsoever. <laughs> so that might have been Susie saying that. <laughs> Oh, no yeah, idea. yeah, because it's about going to the, the dance and she's like, oh, yeah, yes. I'll catch you later. We are going to knock him dead. Hey, come on, you haven't even started getting ready yet. I will. I just, I can't seem to get started. Well, let's move it. We got to get going. I'll meet you there, okay? I promise. You promise? I promise. Look, you better not shine me, girl. It won't. So let's get to this dance. This this oh, boy, this yeah. is the big scene of the movie here. This Definitely. is great. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you have this band and dance, the Colonel. Uh, oh, sorry, that's kind of not spoiler alert, but um, Dean Stroke Colonel. Because we've been talking about this guy. I think Colonel Ettinger. Yes, he's, he's the, the guy one who founded the school. Who's, who yeah. founded the school and who, again, spoiler alert, obviously is the Dean. You know, still alive and kicking. And uh, yeah, he's like, I don't know how this band has got hired because he does not approve at all, nor of like what Cheryl and Femme, you know, what uh, the dress that she's wearing. Now, this is where if you haven't noticed them already, you will really start to notice all the wipes because we start doing this spin like revolving door wipe with a kind of a whoosh sound effect cutting back and forth between the yes. scene. Yes. And yeah, they do this several times between that and Philo and Andrea basically dropping a huge exposition sort of backstory bomb on us. So after maybe the second time they cut back, uh, because they're playing some kind of ballad, I guess, in the band who does this are called Tees, I believe. Yes, I was just looking them up. <laughs> yeah, so they've got, I guess, two songs on here, I think. I guess this is... This is so fucking weird, man. So, right, let's go to the top. <laughs> so we've had Let's Go Crazy. Yep, yep. Can't Stop, which almost sounds like a Queen thing, and we'll talk about Kiss My Butt, and not simply the title, but you know what it... <laughs> from the first fucking line, you know, how they didn't get sued is mind-blowing. But another one here called I Wish You Were Here. And again, How do they do this? Getting, you know, paying probably 10 times the budget to get Pink Floyd on the soundtrack. Sure, sure. Um, so yeah, they're playing this and after she maybe gets bored of this or whatever, and oh, there's a great moment of all the, uh, zombie, um, the highs at 420 blazing zombie, um, preppy kids or whatever. My yep. control kids are all like dancing in step, almost like one has got their feet on the other and they're like rocking side to side all in perfect unison. Yes. Which yes. is just fucking perfect. Oh, it's so good. So after Cheryl and Finn gets bored of this and after we've cut back, she asks the band, do you think you could heat it up a little bit? And the guy's like, I thought you'd never ask. And so he's playing a song called Body Heat, where, um, yeah, he puts his, I think this is where he puts his, and it makes me think of fucking, um, a few people have done this, but particularly Larry Graham from fucking Sly and the Family Stone and Graham Central Station, who likes 
you know, when he's rocking out, like rocking a fucking um, captain's sea captain's hat for some reason. Yeah. Pops that on because it's like, yeah, it's time to take the funk boat, you know, out to <laughs> the high seas or whatever. Oh, and, uh, oh so, cool. so if it wasn't for the music of the funk, if yeah. they played some like other kind of music. 80s stuff. Mm-hmm. I get such a Twin Peaks vibe because of freaking oh, yeah. Sherilyn yeah. Fenn, of course. Order's but dance, Barry yeah, yeah. has snuck in and he's dressed like one of the preppies to, to blend in. Mm-hmm. And he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, dance with me so they don't know. <laughs> and we get to see how terrible of a dancer he is. He tells her, I don't dance. And then we see him and he's almost like Elaine from that famous Seinfeld bit. Oh, he's you dancing. read my mind. Yeah. So, the little kid. It's so yeah. pathetic. Right. <laughs> There's a great moment, but, um, sorry, in the commentary where, and sorry, I'm forgetting his fucking name. No, oh, look, uh, the guy's not Nathaniel Thompson, who's a, uh, Edwin Samuelson. And he says, when this bit comes on, he says, I apologize on behalf of all white people. <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. <laughs> Are you telling me that you killed Emerson because you developed some kind of serum? We don't kill anyone. This was a terrible accident, Andrea. I, what I do is to implant a crystal in the brain, which compensates for the loss of certain brain functions. So that's the trade-off. You live forever, and the students get lobotomized? It's not lobotomy, Andrea. These people lead very, very successful lives. More successful than if they hadn't had the implant, because there are no more neuroses, no more agonizing over things, no more... There's no more anything! What you're doing is sick! You can't replace human emotions with a crystal. Like vampires. You think you could heat it up? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Great. So Tease is a real band. We've got some other like music videos, like some uh, some very low budget shot, like just them in front of a gray like TV studio stage performing and stuff like that. But no, Tease is the real deal. They're fun. I love them. And I love the, uh, I don't know whether you, you call it, where they take it to the bridge or whatever, they, or chorus or whatever, that is kind of <sighs> nasty, you know, slap it to bass all over. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So um, Philo confesses to Andrea what's been going on, and uh, this whole thing with this, like, in his words, like an Indian medicine man and the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the pact or whatever they made to live forever, blah, blah, blah. And uh, <laughs> I believe Andrea tells him, you can't replace human emotions with a crystal. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, oh, yeah. And then we, ju- we just keep cutting back to the dance, and I just wrote, so white. <laughs> and I wrote, um, the dance is amazing. Mm. Finally, Andrea and Barry get back together, and now they're super sleuths trying to solve this mystery that I'm putting in quotation marks. Um, and they end up fighting against all of the, the, the whole thing is just going crazy. The Dean and, and, and uh, Philo and all of the cohorts are arguing now. So all this chaos is happening all over. Andrea jumps into the Dean's car and hot wires <laughs> it. Barry gets on his motorcycle and then quickly re- gets replaced by his stunt double, who even with a helmet on looks so little like Barry, <laughs> it's mind blowing. Like the dude's got a long nose, and you know Barry just is, it's just so cute. He has different hair coming out under the helmet and everything, just so different. She goes to the cops. Of course, cops are in on it. Craziest damn thing I ever heard. So you say there's some kind of drug ring being operated by the faculty at Ettinger? It's a pretty wild claim, Andrew. It's not a drug ring. You said they're all taking drugs. It's not really a drug, okay? It's a serum. They make it themselves using chemicals from the human body. Manufacturing drugs on the premises? You're not listening to me. The the faculty is making this serum by using chemicals from the students' brains. They're actually operating on them, and when they're done with them, they're they're different. They change. Craziest damn thing I ever heard. So we have a car chase, an epic absolutely epic car chase that just comes out of nowhere and she wrecks and ends up back at the school oh yeah we meet this nurse who is this nurse that they introduced like in the kind of second half of the movie i forgot about her yeah yeah this actress's name is abigail hannes and i'm mad that we didn't get introduced to her earlier 
I feel like there's there was a deleted scene where we met her and they just mm. decided to cut mm. it or something to keep the time down. This is her only credit. Yeah. Unless I let me make sure. Here he's, got, here he's got an amazing name. One of the faculty madams, a guy called uh, faculty members, a guy called Brass Adams. Ooh. 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 Hey, I can hear him clanging all the way down the hall. Let me see. So you've got Kevin Kipper Jones, Ooh. Eric and Thomas Organ, mm. <laughs> and a guy just called Jay. Oh, and there's there's a fa- yeah a faculty member. Did you mention Gilbert Purvis? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> what a horrible name! I'd kill my fucking parents. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, uh, this this actress didn't do anything else I can find. But she's so fun. She's like obsessed with Barry, and like she's just she's got the, all the cool dialogue and everything. I mm. love her. I want more of this lady. Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling, Andrea? I think she's strong enough now for surgery. You had a nasty little accident. You could have been killed. Stop struggling. You're not going anywhere. And when you wake up, the world will be a simpler place. Listen, your boyfriend's here. Philo decides to stop using the serum, <clears throat> so he's aging. And then all of the faculty members, he, he like tainted their serum mm-hmm. or something, and now they're all aging super fast. We, so we finally get zombies. It is a bunch of dime store <laughs> monster masks on these old, uh, old, all these old dudes just are instantly monsters and all this crazy shits breaking loose on campus, including an awesome skeleton that just gives up trying to get Andrea. <laughs> it's like, it is, it's head lifts up, it's, <laughs> falls back down. And that's the most extreme. If I recall correctly, it's like the most extreme the horror gets. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone's face melts off or anything. The, the the dean gets all beat up. He's covered in blood. I don't even remember what happens to him. I was so tired when I was watching this last night. Oh, he I gets... Have, please. I think Barry hits him with, like, a, a bone sore or something. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, he's probably got the most blood in, like, the entire movie after that. There's your R rating. I was totally... Yeah, I was yeah. exhausted. No, <laughs> To pause enough. the movie <laughs> and watch the rest of it this morning. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, yes. It is not a comment on this film at all. It is well, a- to be fair, I mean, and I still, you know, we'll, we'll come to it. I mean, if we're being critical or whatever, the pacing in this is like... Weird. You know, it, it, it wouldn't have hurt to trim it a bit, I will say. Yeah, even even at, like, you know, the exact hour and a half. Yeah, it, could, yeah. it could be a little shorter, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I wouldn't change a thing, no, though, me honestly. Neither. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I forgot to mention earlier that apparently all of these zombie people are being controlled by the doctor, uh, the, excuse me, by the Dean mm, who mm. has all these cool looking old reel to reel machines and like computer looking <laughs> things, but it's all controlled by like a tape deck and he plays yeah, this yeah. song. What cracks me up is the tape it's playing in there has the Sire logo. Oh yes. Yeah. So either... <laughs> Uh, Sire produced the perfect music in which to control people who have, have these crystals in, in, installed inside them, or he took two pieces of tape and covered up the little tabs mm-hmm. on the cassette and recorded over whatever uh, Sire records. Um, let's see, what was on up. what was on Sire records in 1987? Bonds <laughs> to jump out of me like Boy George, David Byrne, uh, The Ooh. Cure. Craig David, that's jumping back a bit, and he might not be some translated across the or maybe as Depeche Mode. Yeah, there's some funky looking. Uh, I'll send you the, the artwork for this. A band, a, a very R and B funk looking cover for something called Modernique. Modernique, so beautiful. This is gorgeous. I want to. Mm. I want to listen to this Modernique. But yeah, it's it's just so funny that that logo is unmistakable. <laughs> like, there's lots of like little goof ups in this movie. But that one just made me laugh because I'm a freaking nerd. <laughs> Ooh, this is painful. You okay? This is She's Got a Move <laughs> by Modern Inc. I'm going to send you this. I'm going to send you this so you can hear this Please right do. now. This is important. Oh, and the bass kicks in and it, it redeems itself completely. Oh. I'm, I'm sending it to you. Well, we're, gonna, we're stopping the whole show for Modern Inc. This is fucking great. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> All night long. Funk guitar. All night long, the girl turns me on. That's the lyrics. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That is nice. It's the secret theme song to Hello, This is the Doom Show. <laughs> oh, my, my. 
she turns me on. She gotta move. Boop a doop a doop doop doop. <laughs> Oh man, I thought I'd just totally derail us. I'm gonna I did. come back to that later, but um, wow, yeah, there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this, this is like a Japanese CD artwork in the background, and the typeface. It looks like I don't know German expressionist like Metropolis or yes, something. Totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, thank you for picking that up. You're welcome. I had to bring the funk. Oh, you yeah, know, the, you brought it. The, the 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 white kids dancing. It makes me feel funky. <laughs> Barry has this idea to stop all this bullshit mm. by replacing the tape. So as they're about to get away, they run back in, he puts on a cassette and then they leave. And speaking of copyright infringement, <laughs> songs that sound just like more famous songs, kiss my butt starts playing. And it is fight from your right to kiss my butt. <laughs> Fucking by the so Beastie is. Boys. Yeah. It is such a rip off of fight. You do know uh, all the other songs like you were saying reminded us of other songs. They definitely couldn't yeah. afford Pink Floyd and then I guess outside of their budget as well would be fight for your right to pardon oh, the Beastie Boys. Yeah, definitely. But I mean but that's okay. How, you know, I mean maybe it's just not been uploaded to YouTube this song because the first line, like the syllables and like the sound is like so what is it? Like you wake up in the morning and your clothes don't match your hair. It's so sound alike fucking identical, but if it did <laughs> was on YouTube, you'd think it would get pulled for copyright infringement. Yeah. Of the other song. <laughs> oh my god. So when he plays Kiss My Butt, aside from destroying the viewer of the film's brain <laughs> with that song, it also makes all of the zombies that went to this prep school grow hit go haywire. Mm. And we get this awesome sequence of all these people that were controlled by this one fucking tape player Mm -hmm. in this room of computers, all the way up to the president of the United (laughs) States, and how they indicate these people are like, um, uh, what do you call it, like shorting out. Mm -hmm. They do like a little puff of smoke out of their ear, but it looks like a puff of like talcum powder. (laughs) It's so fucking stupid in Somebody, the best uh, way vaping out the side of the neck <clears throat> or something like you don't expect a movie this small scale to have the big ending like that mm-hmm. where <laughs> potentially society is going to crumble <laughs> <laughs> i especially like the girl in the shower somehow the music was a, she could hear it even though she was in the shower and girl yeah. falls over yeah no nudity that I detected no which is crazy considering you know the two leading ladies involved and we know they were not shy <laughs> Just hey, good for them. Yeah. Give them a break. Give them a break. I mean, you know, we like. <laughs> there's a theory about this that it's probably because the, the kind of prime mover behind this, you know, without getting too far into background just yet, is uh, Aziz Ghazal. And yeah, on the um, one of the interviews on this Blu-ray with the writer, one of the writers, Tim Doyle, uh, yep, he, yep. He, he, ref- he calls him. He says he had a bit of a prudish attitude to disease. So you know, this may be sort of why this you know it turned out this way well his, his other his other credit uh the aziz Ghazal, his other credit was like a, a movie about like gay culture mm, mm. so i wonder if maybe he just didn't want to see ladies naked you know like yeah i suppose he i didn't know. go the other route and have a bunch of guys naked but you know i was i was just curious maybe that you know i mean obviously you can <laughs> As a straight person, you can make something about <laughs> gay culture. But I just thought it was an interesting little, like, the only other thing he did was that. I think that pretty much gets us to the end of the movie, right? Oh, and uh, one last important thing while they're, uh, you know, asking us to, literally riding off into the sunset, asking us to kiss their butt. Um, we had, um, I think we've had a couple of moments like this around the, the opening titles of, like, little animated interstitials or what have you. At the end, it literally goes like, um, fuck, it's making me think of like an 80s music video or something. Not like Take On Me, but something like that, where it literally goes to like a painted or not drawing crayon. I can't remember now, but you know what I mean. Yeah, what is that? Why did they do that? Yeah. It's so artful. Yeah. So, yeah, it turns into like a weird freaking uh, artsy horizon as they ride off on, in the sunset together. Straight, yeah, straight, is, <laughs> straight into the sun which swallows them and we get a big gulp <laughs> on the soundtrack. Just to remind us this is a horror movie. Yeah. Like, yeah I forgot right. to tell you, by the way, you're supposed to be spooky. <laughs> oh man. So so a little bit of trivia about this. Uh, this was a huge fucking bomb. Mm. Uh, this made no money whatsoever. <laughs> Which is fine. It's just fine. I normally don't notice that, but there was like this pulled like twenty grand in the theater. 
Yeah, they were like, saying it. It's insane. It played, I think, is it the Egyptian theatre, the big one, in, one of the big ones in Hollywood? Again, the writer, he's saying he was sat in there and there was, like, him and maybe three people sat in this, like, several thousand seat theatre. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Uh, the the alternate title of this was uh, the school that ate my brain. Love it, lovely, absolutely lovely. And in the other titles were like zombie high, zombie school, zombie college, stuff like that. So nothing too exciting beyond that. But the 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 school ate my brain. They should have gone for that. Yeah, they should have leaned into the comedy more. I think. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do love the trivia on IMDb pointing out that Virginia Madsen was twenty six. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit from the the Tim the Tim Doyle is that his name? Yes, yes. Uh, a little bit from his interview was that um, Aziz uh, Ghazal was like head of the equipment department at the school mm. where he worked, and so he was the one renting out cameras, renting out lighting, renting out whatever the students needed to make films. And he just says he's a to- he's a big character. He describes him as mono. What was it like mono ego? What was that fucking word? Not, he, um, I can't believe it right like mono, monomaniacal, maybe? Yeah, he, he described him twice in the same interview as monomaniacal. <laughs> so, yes, he was quite a character. I did watch this. I didn't write down a ton of notes for it because it kind of... And I suppose we should maybe talk about this. I was kind of not going to mention it because it's such a sad fucking story. You know, what happened oh, what to is this it? guy in the end about Aziz Gazelle? No. Do you know? Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah, it is his life. My God, it took such a dark turn towards the end. Now, he also, I think, I might be paraphrasing, gets described by Tim Doyle sort of kind of affectionately because he said, you know, Hollywood's full of characters like this kind of bullshit artists who will, you know, just kind of string you along and tell you one thing and then deliver. So, but he said, you know, that gave him some experience. And um, so the school year you were alluding to, this is, I think, USC, is it? Uh, was it? Oh, was where, was that where John Carpenter went, I think? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So it's essentially kind of a, a student yep. film. Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. A bit like sort of happened with Dark Star, I suppose. Although, you know, the trajectory of that was a bit different. That was why short that was expanded to the feature, feature length. So, yeah, he was a, kind of the head of the um, equipment department there. And he kind of, through his... Um, you know, just how he was, he was able to kind of um, sort of strong arm a lot of people into getting involved in this to keep on his good side, whatever. And that's, you know, I suppose is a good skill <laughs> as a producer, even, you know, reeks of being a bit manipulative to be able to do this. Oh, um, totally. To get all these people involved. Um, but yeah, later on, so he was trying to get a film off the ground, I believe, called The Brave, which I think was later done by Johnny Depp. And oh. he had a bad habit, this guy, of like playing people against each other or trying to you know, play both sides against the, uh, the the middle or however you want to put it. And it kind of caught up with him. And he, I don't know the full story and whether this, because it does sound like he had a bit of a head of temper, whether there was some larger mental health issues at work. But anyway, long story short, he eventually basically murdered his wife and one of his daughters, yeah, I think, um, and then torched his house and basically killed himself. So... Fucking terrible Christ. story. Like I said, I wasn't even going to mention wow. it because it kind of, yeah. you know, is a bit like I'm watching this this interview. It, it kind of bummed me out a bit because, it, you know, and I, I admire his honesty. And sorry for getting his name, Tim Doyle. Uh, I, I admire his honesty about it, but it, it did kind of, it, it certainly didn't make me love the movie any mess, but it did bum me out a bit sort of watching yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's worth watching. It's interesting and kind of a cautionary tale, I suppose. But my God, yeah, it was fucking tragic to say the least. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, on that note, how mm. do you feel about this movie? <laughs> oh, man, I, I fucking love it. I loved it yeah. from the off when I first discovered it. I was like, that was a few, I don't know, you know, less than a five well spent on the rental that I got. And I was, you know, fucking overjoyed when uh, 88 Films, they put the Blu-ray out, you know, so I was not expecting it to, because it's, you know, been such a, an obscure film for... Um, yeah, yeah so many years uh for it to but you know that this is the the wonderful age we live in now that just you know obscurities like this do get that kind of deluxe treatment um as i was sort of alluding to you the um extras on this they're not the best i've ever heard you know the commentary's fun it's kind of loose uh, a lot of it is more about stuff kind of tangential to the movie but still you know an enjoyable listen uh, yeah. yeah that um tim doyle interview was kind of educational even again i was a bit depressed by the end of it <laughs> <laughs> you know bless him and the other one was with 
Um, I guess you couldn't really find many people to talk with on this uh, makeup artist called Christopher Biggs, but it's a very interesting career. And we more talk about a lot of his his um, other credits and stuff that he'd done. But he was basically brought in to redo the old age makeup, ah, which is, okay. is, is decent. You know, even if it reminds yeah, me bad. a bit of um, of Grandpa from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre a little bit. It's it's certainly better than the uh, the freaking dime store zombie masks oh yeah yeah that the uh that the old guys are wearing yeah that that was terrible <laughs> <laughs> but yeah oh he worked on all kinds of good shit wow. oh yeah 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 nightmare on elm street the unnameable Ooh, yeah the unnameable that, that makeup and that's awesome don't we can see it's that an hp lovecraft uh yep yep i recommend that one that's that's a good one oh silent night deadly night part two critters terror vision Something I've always wanted to see and probably <laughs> will be disappointing. Uh, Hard Rock Zombies, <laughs> which looks amazing. I need to get down with that. Missing the most important one of all, though. Between uh, Zombie High and From a Whisper to a Scream, which I think something's going to be a copy of. I've still not watched. Uh, yeah, starting in 1987, special makeup effects artist on My Two Dads. Man, how did he? he's what brought those two dads to life. <laughs> yes. Man, I never realized those were animatronic. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, you kindly sent me the, the 88 films mm. of this one, and thank you for that. Oh, I love it. Welcome. This was one of my favorites of the year, the oh, year man. I saw it. I don't remember what year it was I watched it. A couple of years ago. Yeah. Just really, probably over the pandemic, I was like, mm. what is this? I've never heard of this. And sure enough, it's just, oh, it's fantastic. Um, it's really pretty. Mm. Uh, shot really well. It's got some atmosphere. Um, it's also cheap as shit. Very silly. Very quaint, like I was talking about. It does feel like it may have had some stuff trimmed out of it. But as yeah, we talked yeah. about with the pacing, we're just fine with it as it is. And I, yeah, the only thing I could complain about was the the, the dialogue was not mixed very well. But that, that <laughs> happens with some of these freaking movies. I mean, God help me, I have um, Murder Weapon starring uh, Linnea Quigley. And uh, it's one of the worst absolute worst audio mixes i can't understand a word a single character is saying in that entire movie and thankfully uh good old vinegar syndrome provided subtitles or else oh, it's just right. lost yeah and th- that was after i'd watched it on the vhs tape <laughs> and it struggled through on the vhs tape get the blu-ray i'm still squinting at my tv like that didn't help <laughs> <laughs> help <laughs> oh man do you have anything else you want to add about good old uh zombie high or zombi yeah i mean i just echo 420 blazing (laughs) yeah i just echo everything you said really and it's just a good um you know i've I've so many of these now but if i wanted a good like comfort comfort horror movie just something that yeah just by the end of it just it was just going to leave you in a good mood you know so it just has a a wonderful ending and again i think they they handle the the mix of tones pretty well you know from having some generally creepy moments to some you know, goofy college, sorry, prep school hijinks, whatever, to uh, yeah. a bit of, um, yeah, let's like say genuine kind of almost like emotion and stuff and, um, and what have you. Um, it's like the difference between tone issues and tone problems. Like, mm, mm. <laughs> this definitely doesn't have tone problems. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think they handle it well and nothing really, not one thing kind of unbalances the other, uh, I would yeah. say. Well, Simon, thank you for joining me on this this wonderful zombie time. Most welcome. And uh, we're going to freaking have some potatoes. <laughs> Just cover our plates and mashed potatoes. It's going to be amazing. Oh, <laughs> shit. Have you heard that? Um, I think it's off the Hangable Auto Bulb uh, EP or whatever you, the AFX on the first track where they've got the kid talking about mashed potatoes. Have you heard that? No, I'll, list, I'll look that up. That I sounds amazing. Say, I will fucking send it. It's called Children's Please. <laughs> And folks, thanks for listening. And remember, uh, let's see, you can't replace human emotions with a crystal. (laughs) But I don't blame you for trying. So bye. Bye. Folks, thanks so much for listening to this episode. If you'd like to write into the show, send an email to doomedmoviethon at gmail. 
or hit us up at Doomed Movie Thon on Instagram or at Doomed Movie Thon on Twitter or at Doomed Movie Thon at Discord or go to Hello This Is The Doom Show on Facebook and message us there. If you want more Hello This Is The Doom Show, go to doomedmoviethon.com and click the podcast button for the archive or go to YouTube and look up Doomed Movie Thon and you'll find the classic episodes of Hello, This is the Doomed Show. And if that's still not enough, um, I have written some books, you know, about my love of movies over on Amazon.com. Uh, just look up Richard Glenn Schmidt and you'll find Giallo Meltdown, A Moviethon Diary, Giallo Meltdown 2, Cinema Somnambulist, or Doomed Moviethon, the book. Hello, This is the Doomed Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Go to legionpodcast.com and check out the other great shows over there.